SiliconANGLE TV and Wikibon.org present Oracle Open World 2011. And now, hosts John Furrier and Dave Vellante on the Cube. Okay, we're back at Oracle Open World. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and we are here inside theCUBE, which is our flagship telecast, where we go out to the most important tech events and talk to the smartest people we can find, startups, executives, thought leaders, analysts, anyone who's got some knowledge to share, and we share that with you. We extract the signal from the noise. Um, we are at Oracle Open World Live in San Francisco, California, where we are in a small little studio, kind of a guerrilla operation set here with HD, pumping it out to you over justin.tv and siliconangle.tv, and I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org, and we've got a great guest, uh, Aaron Passi, CTO of Clustrix. Uh, Aaron, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Uh, we met last night with, uh, with Paul, John, you were there, yeah. and uh, we had a good meeting with Paul, so yeah. thanks for being here. So Clusterix is a startup in San Francisco, California. They're um, you know, a small company funded uh, by some venture capitalists here in Silicon Valley in San Francisco and really are at the cutting edge of the database wars and the new generation of solutions that's powering the gaming business and enterprises all around the world. And these guys are growing like crazy. And, and the controversy really is around SQL, MySQL, NoSQL, and you guys coined the term NewSQL, which is you know, a, a term you're trying to get out there. Uh, but What's notable is you guys were the uh, guys involved in founding Isilon Systems, which was you know, bought by EMC for how many billion, Dave? Two billion. Two billion dollars. Um, so this is not just some app guys doing some startups. You guys actually know what you're doing. You had a huge exit in your last company. Um, you bring a lot of that DNA to the startup space where all the actions at the networking and database layer. So uh, tell us what's going on with Clusterix right now and uh, why are you guys so excited right now? Uh, what's going on with Clusterx? We are, we're, we're expanding our business. We're um, new customers, uh, very exciting. That um, a bunch of them in production, um, new features coming out, um, scalable databases is is uh, continuing to. Uh, <laughs> it's conti it's. Con I spit it out. You can get it out. I can That's get. Good. I can get it out. It's only a thousand people watching. It's right only now. a thousand. People. Come on. Um, yeah, but you guys are in that whole SQL, no SQL debate right now. You guys yeah. point the term. What is new SQL? New SQL is the concept of scalable SQL. We we do, we don't want to have to require the application developers to throw away all their all their code that 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 handled relational stuff in the past. We we do atomic. We do acid compliance. We do atomic. We do transactions, we, we do relational calculus, all of that, and we do it in a scalable way. We can start with a small cluster that's only three nodes, and then continue to expand as, as large as you want it to be, as fast as you want it to be. So, um, there's a perception out there that SQL doesn't scale. Why is that perception there, and, and is it correct? Well, the perception is there because SQL hasn't scaled. Um, you, look at, you look at all the, the different systems that are quote, scalable, I mean, you look at Oracle Rack. I was going to say, Oracle would say, oh, we scale. I mean, help us squint through that, Aaron. I mean, Oracle Rack, I mean, is a, is a very mature product. It, it, it's reliable, it, it works well, but it has a limit to its scale. You, you look at, the, when you, as you add nodes to it, you'll get an asymptote of, of how fast it can go. And, and, one, and when you add nodes beyond that, it doesn't get any faster. Uh, if you contrast that with, with Clustrix, we have a completely different architecture, and when we add nodes, we, we get um, near linear scalability. We've done, we've done um, large scale tests and have demonstrated that in the field and in the lab. Yeah, so there, are, again, there's a perception that you got to go to a you know, NoSQL MongoDB, for example, to, to get true scale. Um, how, how, how do you compare to something like that? Well, we're, Can you scale as well? I mean, and, and we actually scale a lot better. If, um, Sergey Sarev is, is one of our founders, did a, did a test uh, a few months ago where he took Mongo and he took Clusterix and tried to do sort of the same workload. It's, it's a little bit tough because there's um, a lot more features with Clusterix and there's a, 
it's it, it's it's easier to make it work in in an application world with us. But but we did, we had the same sort of app, and and we started to scale. And and when you do reads that way, Mongo and Clusterix, they've looked about the same. They continue to scale. But All once, read. Yeah. Once you start doing writes, um, you get this horrible lock contention in Mongo, and it doesn't actually scale in in the way that it sh you know you would expect it to. So it, it's it's primary purpose for being is, is scale and it has and it doesn't demonstrate that in, in all the workloads that matter. Okay, so um, I mean the obvious follow-up question there is, is is Sergey a Mongo expert? I mean he's obviously a cluster expert. Is he a Mongo expert? Is is he able to I mean are there ways around that or is that fundamentally an architectural issue in your opinion? I think with Mongo, it's probably not architectural. I mean, it, I think it was the implementation. Um, yeah, okay. and, and I'm sure that that will expand, but you still don't get any of the additional features. It, it, you, they've, thrown, they've thrown out so many of the features that everybody has come to expect in, the, in, in a database that it's, it's kind of a different beast entirely. So, I mean, we, we're talking, we're getting a little bit down in the weeds here, but, but talk about the, the value of being able to scale SQL. I mean, it may seem obvious, you can maybe just drop it in and have to rip and replace your infrastructure, but talk about that a little bit. What's the business value? If you look at all the, the web properties out there, their, their dream is to have the entire world as their user base. They, they want to, <laughs> they, they'll start off with, you know, a thousand. That's Oracle's dream too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But they'll start out, they'll get a, they'll, they'll get a successful concept, they'll, they'll, they'll get it out there as, as quick, quickly and as cheaply as possible, they'll use MySQL, they'll, they'll get it working, and then, and then all of a sudden they're the victims of their own success. So they will, they will start, um, they'll, they'll, have, they'll have various things fall apart, they'll, they'll, um, their, their users start getting a bad experience now that, now, that there's, now that there's a ton of concurrency, a ton of different people on there. Um, what Clusterix can do is it can go in and it can just replace that MySQL box um, just straight up with, with, with no modification to the application. And now you can scale it as large as you want it to go from then on out. And you can continue to add nodes um, to grow with the business. So as they make money, um, they, will, they will be able to <laughs> give us money and, and put nodes into their, into their clusters. And, <laughs> and so if I'm a MySQL, we, actually we are a MySQL shop and uh, we haven't hit that scaling limit yet. You know, our dream is to do just that. But you're saying we could, we could drop in Clusterix um, non-disruptively, essentially, um, and be able to scale our business. Yeah, absolutely. You can actually put Clusterix in as a MySQL slave using the MySQL replication protocol. It'll copy the data over to the, the Clusterix box, and then you can transparently flip it in as the master. And it's a, it's a very seamless integration strategy. So who are some of the people using uh, Clusterix? Can you share that with us? Who's using Clusterix? Yeah. Um, we've, we've announced several customers. Um, Photobox in Europe, which is the largest photo sharing site in Europe. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we've, uh, we've announced uh, EBI is another one, which is actually a European Bioinformatics Institute. So we have like life sciences type, type applications. We have, um, we have the ladders, uh, you know, yeah. the 100,000 uh, K plus job site. Um, and, and, I offer, which is uh, which is like eBay here in the city. Um, right. Okay. Yeah, I'm waiting for Wiki Wikipedia to use it because we use the same software as Wikipedia, and that's when we'll start using. We actually it. have our yeah. internal wiki on our on our cluster. You do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you said earlier, victim of their own success. I mean, a lot of the enterprises have, have Oracle, for example. I've been, you know, living with Oracle for years. They trust Oracle to, because they're in there, not so much trust them per se, but they're comfortable with Oracle. But they do pay a lot for it. You guys have a solution that, that can, has a scale opportunity for enterprise. What's your core value for uh, people who might not want to go with Oracle for scaling out? Well, our core values are sort of threefold. Um, they are scale, which we've talked about, fault tolerance. In our system, any, any piece of the system can fail, any node can fail, any switch can fail, any drive, and it transparently uh, handles that without, without any users even noticing the, the, the problem. Um, and that's a, that's a huge deal for, for many of our customers. And then the, the final thing is ease of use. We, we have an appliance model, you drop it in, it works out of the box, takes 10 minutes to set up, it takes 20 seconds to add an additional node when you need more capacity, it'll automatically uh, redistribute the data on the back end. There's no, there's no real trick to making it work. It just works. Every company has their own little 
secret sauce or some little thing that they do better than anyone else that they're proud of, usually from the founders or the team. What do you guys do that Clusterix that you guys say, we do this really, really well, um, that's different, that you guys are proud of, and everyone, it's in the DNA of the company, is it whether it's shipping code, managing hardware, fault tolerance, is there one thing that you guys say, you know, the company's DNA and the culture is uh, we do something really well. What is that one thing that you do, you'd say? Can you share with us any insight there? Sure. Well, maybe maybe just from the product point of view, um, we 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 resolve queries in a fundamentally different way in our in our system. So back to the Oracle Rack, they have this shared storage backend, um, and they what they do is they actually pull the data to where the query is running. In, in our world, we actually ship the query out to where the data lives. Um, we we decompose the query into query fragments. We send it out. We and, and make. Um, and can in parallel execute that query plan. Um, so you can actually, as you add nodes, individual queries get faster and the and concurrent lots of queries get faster. And this is really unique in the in, in the world, basically, as far as that goes. We're really proud of the of, of the way that we've we've taken this concept and, and, and taken it all the way to a, a fully functional database. So I have a question for you. So we were out the other night talking to someone from uh, Riot Games, and there's a lot of gamers um, out there, platforms that are growing like crazy, literally two million concurrence, 20 million. Zynga has you know, stats that says at any given time at the, the worst hour, 60 million people concurrently um, on the network, on their, on their, on their servers. When, you, when does a company get to the point where they say, okay, I got to get Clusterix in here from a scale standpoint? Um, you said, you know, because most guys are putting up some cloud. When do you see Clusterix really kicking in? And what are their challenges as, you, as they get to that level of scale? Well, before Clusterix came around, they, the companies like that would, would hit a cliff. They would, th their one server would be dying. They would try to do some replication, which can, which can make some of the read-only traffic a little easier. Um, but the, the only real way they had to scale before Clusterix was to do sharding and, uh, or partitioning the data to multiple databases. And that was a huge, huge amount of, of, of effort um, from both a developer and operational point of view. Um, so the ideal place to, to really consider Clusterix is, is at that point, before you do all that work. Because uh, we, we make it so you don't ever have to and, and you can continue to scale. You can put your, your resources into making the game better rather than, than working with a back-end database, which doesn't really, your customers don't actually see that. I think the other thing about these gaming environments too is this, and this happens also for applications, is um, real time. I mean, people need to be, if I go to, uh, we heard from Fusion IO, CEO says if Apple sells a game, they want to instantly have that purchase happen in real time. It's not a lot of uh, downtime. So it's a big push to in memory. Um, what do you got, how do you guys work with that whole in memory trend and how does that affect the Clusterix value proposition, if any, does it? Well, the in memory is, the in memory databases are sort of a, it seems like a, a bit of a hack to, to, to be able to throw hardware at the problem. They, <laughs> It, they, they end up with a... <laughs> That's good. Here, here. <laughs> That's a blog post right there. All right, so go ahead. Um. I mean, there are applications where, where that's the only thing that's fast enough, but, but for the most part, we have, um, we have the scalable system, we have the, um, we have a ton of cash, actually. We have a lot of memory there, but it's all... Cash, but, like not nice as currency, but like cash cash. Mem <laughs> memory cash. Memory cash. <laughs> C-H-E. <laughs> well funded, we know that. You got some cash yes, in the bank, absolutely. but not a ton of cash, um, per se. But, but, every, but everything that, that, that gets written to our system is persistent and atomic as it's, as it's written. When, when we respond that, that something is there, it's, it's there, it's there persistently. And the in-memory systems don't have that property in general. You have a much more lazy way to get it out to something persistent, or sometimes not at all. You'll just have multiple machines that if both of them die at the same time, then you've lost data. Um, so in, in our world, we, d we don't have these trade-offs. We, we can have the performance, we can have the uh, persistence and, and and make it a general purpose database. Where's the Where's the idea come from? I mean, you guys, uh, Isilon background. What did you learn from that? And um, and and how did you get to this notion of uh, making SQL scale? Uh, I think I think went out on a lot of customer calls at Isilon, and 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 they uh, most of our customers at Isilon really loved the product, and it and it really was an excellent product. They would go in and it would it would fix their unstructured data problem. They would go and 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 they really it would scale as large as they wanted. It would it would it would be as fast as they want. But but we had a 
dozens of them say, if you could do this with my database, I would have already purchased it. Because oftentimes the database for those customers were the bigger problem at their site. But you know, they needed to solve one and they needed to solve the other. And, and we and Isilon didn't have a solution to that. Um, it was only scalable on, on the storage side. So after you hear that a few dozen times, it's like, hey, well, maybe this is some, there's something there, right? Yeah, that's great. So uh, Aaron Passy, uh, CTO of Clusterix, I mean, just fantastic uh, story with Isilon. Um, new startup, hot area. Um, and my last question is, so as the CTO, where are you at right now with, uh, with the product? Where are you spending your time? I mean, we're spending the time um, putting new features into the product, um, doing, m you know, making it robust, finding new customers, um, doing research into different verticals to be able to find, find places where, where it'll fit. Um, it, it, it's, it's sometimes surprising where you, where you find things to go. So that's, like yeah. I mentioned earlier, the, the bio IT, bioinformatics, is a, it, it looks, looks to be a really big user of this, and, and we want to continue to expand where, where we're applicable. Excellent, well thanks very much, Aaron, for coming up here on theCUBE and filling in for your CEO, Paul McKessel. We, we, we appreciate that, and, uh, and thanks for coming on. Oh, All right, thank thanks you very for coming much. On. Appreciate it. Okay.